Welcome to another episode of the Press Start Podcast. I'm Mr. Techno Squeak, and I'm here with Nostalgic Dan One, and we are joined by Play Lives, not Play Alives. <laughs> or both. So, so, before, yeah, before we get started, we want to thank everyone that has subscribed to our YouTube channel and listens to the podcast. Definitely, because we just recently passed, or we just recently hit 100 subs on our Press Star Pod YouTube, so that's really awesome. We appreciate all the support and all you guys listening yeah. on iTunes. We appreciate it. Yeah, and about about iTunes, uh, we're having some uh, difficulties with bandwidth, so. Yeah. This episode probably won't be on iTunes till later. And and Quick Freeze is not around because he's having internet problems. So, so this episode will not star Quick Freeze. <laughs> nope. nope, not at all. Um so Playa, that's what I call you. Every you know that. Uh, what is your YouTube channel, and what is it about, and what kind of games you like? Um, you know, I just I uh, got the pretty much basic gaming YouTube channel. I do the pickups, the you know collection videos, some random videos that I enjoy doing. Um, my favorite games are probably the RPG genre. Um, but I can play any genre out there. Final Fantasy IV is my favorite game. I have every single iteration of it. I've got it on me. It, it's everywhere. I've got a Rosa blow-up doll. I fuck every night. <laughs> I'm going to get the Rydia one, and it's going to be quite the wild weekend. <laughs> it's going to be awesome. I want to get, like, the kid Rydia one, you know? Yeah. That'd be pretty hot. But, um, yeah, um, I do have just a pretty basic gaming channel, but I do like to change it up every now and again with, like, an interesting story that happened or, like, a food video, which um, I'll just say right now, I've got another milk video kind of coming out pretty soon. Once I can find four liters of eggnog, I'm going to do the milk <laughs> challenge with eggnog. And I've got a naked video. i got the boxer's collection video. Yep. And uh, I actually feel bad about that video because I had a copy of Mario 64 down my pants in that video. And I totally forgot that it was in that video, and I ended up trading it to another YouTuber. <laughs> I just totally forgot. I remembered a couple months after. I was like, oh, yeah. I could have worth something. You Fuck. might want to disinfect that first. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's that's me on YouTube in a nutshell. Yeah. And he gets hit hit up by guys for a Sega CD for a trade-off yeah. or something special. I think I'm just going to give up on Sega CD. I've got th- I've got three of them, and none of them work. Nice. That sucks. <laughs> so, yeah. At least I got a Hummer out of it. <laughs> Free just DJ. Kidding. Just kidding. It's a $50 BJ. <laughs> Better be a good one then. Yeah, no doubt. Everlasting. <laughs> so, do we want to jump into games we've been playing recently? Yeah, sure. Why don't we start off with our guests, play Liz? Wanna... Oh, I. You know, I'm just like the biggest whore when it comes to Disgaea. And last week was my birthday, so I convinced my fiance to getting me uh, Disgaea. Nice. So, uh, Disgaea 4, I played the crap out of 3, like, a good 500 hours into it. <laughs> I got I got the Platinum trophy on it in a matter of days when the trophy system came out. Maxed out every single, like, character class whatsoever. Uh, I just decimated that game. Disgaea, I get addicted to it when I play it. I picked it up on Saturday. I started playing it Saturday night, and I had the main story com- finished before sa- uh, Sunday night. <laughs> And I've just been playing that, like, nonstop since Saturday. I, it's just so much fun. I, I can't stop playing it. And then if I'm watching TV or something, my fiancé likes to play RuneScape. 
and I had an old account that's pretty much the same level, so I kill account. I kill time with that piece of crap. <laughs> and that's all I've been playing. That's cool. Recently, I was getting into like I picked up a PS3, obviously, and I've been playing Disgaea 3 as well, so I'm enjoying nice. it. Oh yeah, it's good. Tons of fun. Have you played any other Disgaea games in the series or no? No. Okay, I've heard that from a lot of people that 3 is pretty much the crappiest one out there, but I've skipped 2, I don't know why for some reason, I've had it for a long time, but I just haven't felt like getting into that game, but I hear 2 is the best, but 4 is also really good, I think it's better than 3, it's definitely worth picking up. They all seem to be pretty good though, in general. Yeah, pour in 25, 30 hours, beat the story, and then you got a good couple hundred hours more to play, Yeah, it's ridiculous. What comes in that premium edition for Disguise 4? Uh, like a book, a soundtrack, and a little figure, I think. Um, by the time I'd gotten around to actually getting it, uh, the special edition wasn't around in my area, which I'm kind of pissed about, but mm. it's not like I even have the space for it. I don't have the space for most of my games anyway. I know, same here. <laughs> so, Techno Squeak, what have you been playing? Oh, man, I, I've been playing a lot lately. Um, I've been playing uh, some NBA Jam on Fire Edition. Um, great game. Nice. Um, it has a lot of uh, stuff you can unlock in that, um, which I'm really glad about. Um, I've been messing with my... Uh, Original Xbox, uh, just playing some games on that, like Metal Gear Solid 2. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Substance, uh, um, that's pretty much it for the Xbox. Uh, I've been, uh, I just recently got a Sega Saturn controller because my original one was pretty much broken, and I've been playing uh, Fighting Vipers hmm. and X-Men vs. Street Fighter, and I was uh, going to start to play some Grandia, but it's in Japanese, so, yeah. <laughs> and what else? I've been playing uh, some more. Uh, I played... Uh, I finished Infamous 2. I'm not sure if I said that in the last episode. No, I don't think but so. But I finished... Oh, yeah, okay. I finished Infamous 2 on the good side. Um, that's what I, you know, in the game. In the second one, you uh, you can start off, like, if you played the, sec or the first one and beat it, you can start off. On the second one, you know, with uh, what you got in the first one, and um, so you'll be good to everyone, or everyone will look up to you since you were good in the first one, but now I'm playing the first one again, uh, going on the evil side, and um, I just messed around with... Uh, Spyro on the PS3 as well. The, you know, the first one, PS1 classic. And that's it. What about you, Dan? Okay, so for me, pretty much the games I've been playing recently, I actually live-streamed all the games i played pretty much for this week. So I started off with The Legend of Heroes, Trials in the Sky, put some more time into that on the PlayStation Portable, but I played that for like two hours on the live stream. I got I got my ass whooped by a boss, and now I have to like level grind for a bit. But then I started up a game I am absolutely addicted to and just falling in love with, and that's Ease the Open Felgana, which I live streamed for about three hours straight, and then I put at least another four hours into it since then. So I'm really enjoying that. The music is incredible in the game, and the combat is just phenomenal, spot on. And I played some random games that I live streamed. I 
played Street Hoverboard Racing, which is a really quirky racing game on the PlayStation 1, but it's really fun. I played that, live streamed that. And I played some Midway Arcade Treasures. I was playing some old school Joust, Paperboy, and Robotron 2084. Live streamed that for a bit. And I played a little Ooh. bit of Ballast 3 on the Sega Genesis. Nice. Live streamed that. And for Steam, I started playing a little PC, indie PC game I got from like the Humble Bundle when they had that. And it's called Osmos. And it's an interesting little game. What it is is where you're like a little tiny particle, and you have to like get giant by like absorbing these other bigger particles. So it's kind of similar to like Feeding Frenzy on the Xbox Live Arcade, if you ever played that, where you start off as a small fish, you have to get bigger. But it's really intuitive, it's really like in-depth, and it's like a puzzle game too. So I'm enjoying that. But yeah, that's pretty much it for me. Well, it looks like it's time for some gaming news. And I found this on uh, Kotaku. Uh, it's my favorite uh, place to find news um, about games and stuff. Um, but if you guys didn't know, uh, there's going to be a new Transformers game. And it's called Transformers Fall of Cybertron. Um, you know, with the very, very high praised War for Cybertron that came out. I'm still playing that one. Um, haven't played it for a little bit. Um, but the game, the new one, Fall of Cybertron, uh, comes with Grimlock. If any of you guys are Transformers fans, you guys know that, that uh, he is the king of the Dinobots. Um, and uh, right here it says, uh, <laughs> right here it says, the original headline for this was uh, Motherfucking Grimlock. <laughs> uh, but they decided to edit it. It, <laughs> so um, I'm guessing a lot of people like the Dinobots. Um, I know what Johnny Millennium is. Um, he has those two posters of them. And um, but yeah, uh, Grimlock will be with the Autobots, siding with you know Optimus Prime, and uh, you'll be able to read up on it in Game Informer. Um, on October 14th. So, yeah. Are you guys excited? Are you guys fans of Transformers? I like them. not big on it, though. Yeah, I was more big on it when I was a kid, I, but not getting, really anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I've been getting on in on it, like, really heavily with the, you know, War for Cybertron. Like, I was playing that, and then... Um, I have all of, uh, the Armada, uh, animated series. I've been watching that almost, I'm like on the last two episodes. Uh, um, Starscream's my favorite. Um, yeah. It's awesome. Um, I'm thinking about buying some action figures. Being a kid again. <laughs> Uh, in other news, um, I don't know how you pronounce this, um, VVVVV yeah. is coming to, uh, the, coming to the 3DS, um, the only other system or other way you could play this I, that I know of is Steam. Yep. I don't know if it's on Xbox Live or, or PSN. No, it's just Steam. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to see when it comes out. Um, it doesn't say here. So, if you want to play some super hard old school platformer, just wait. And it will be on your 3DS on the go 
Yeah. I wonder how they'll do 3D, though. I don't know. Maybe background, foreground with, like, the 2D art. Yeah. Did you ever play that, player? Ah, uh, no, I've never actually even been on Steam. I barely play games on my computer. And, um, I'd, I'd probably look into it if it was, like, a hardcore platformer, like, on the DS, but, um, since it's on the 3DS, I, I won't be getting it, because, uh, I can't even see the 3D in the 3DS anyway. kind of <laughs> sucks. Yeah. Well, there's, most games on the 3DS are kind of, like, it's, like, hard to tell, because it's more of, like, a depth of field. It's, like, background, foreground. But there's a few exceptions of that where, like, I I bet you if you tried, like, Star Fox 3D or even Rayman 3D, those games are more, like, pop-out-of-the-screen 3D. So I think you would notice that a lot more. Well, I tried Rayman and Street Fighter. But, I mean, the only thing the th- 3D slider really did for me was make it look like I was in the toilet or something. I also <laughs> played uh, Sonic Generations and Shinobi at PAX, but I didn't really notice th- any 3D in there either. You could just play it on 2D. Yeah, <laughs> but... I have other stuff that can do that, too. (laughs) Yeah, but come on, these are new games. And it's only 170 now. This is coming (laughs) from Nostalgic Dan. Let's play the new stuff. No, this is coming from the guy who loved the Nintendo (laughs) DS and is hoping the 3DS has a library like the Nintendo DS. Hoping the companies like Atlas spoil with the 3DS and whatnot, like they did with the DS. I can't wait. There's no, there's no like 3DS games right now where like the 3D is like mind blowing and like really, really adds to the game. It's just like a nice little touch. But I love VVV. I have VVV on Steam and it's an awesome platformer. Like I got it for only like 250, but recently it already passed, but it was a part of the Humble Indie bundle. So you could have got like VVV with like 11 other games for like five bucks. And it's an awesome platformer. You go around in like these different environments. And it's really, really hard. You're going to, like, die a lot in that game. But it's got some awesome, like, soundtrack to it as well. I highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite indie games. I was actually going to do a video on it. Like, I used to do the indie game Spotlight, which I want to bring back. So, and I wanted to do that for VVV. I got one more. Yes, go for it. Are you guys ready to beat some people up in Batman? Arkham City. Yes, I am. As long as it's fast-paced. As long as it's like $30. Dude, it's gonna... What? I'm not gonna buy it, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna have too many other games one. to buy. Unless it's got Batman dancing. Uh, well, the whole series would be awesome. Huh? Like, pow, mint, kablam. That would well, be fuck killer. I'd buy it day one. <laughs> That should be an add-on or something, game add-on. Yes. <laughs> 60s Batman? Yeah. <laughs> oh. Nightwing. So, I'm a big fan of Nightwing. He's badass. Also, I f- saw a UK video on YouTube... Um, that uh, UK's getting, if they pre-order it from GameStop, uh, they get Robin. So I don't know if we're also getting Robin or not. I'm like, you know, yeah, Nightwing's, you know, a lot cooler, but I'd like to have all of them. Why don't you explain who Nightwing is? I have no idea. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, same for, here. For those I forgot even about know. Robin. You, <laughs> who the hell is Robin? What? You guys don't, don't know who Nightwing is. Faggot. You don't know. <laughs> Nightwing is the first Robin. Whenever he grew up and he went away and then he came back as Nightwing. And he was like, badass. Well, it's about time. I know. It's about time he mans up. Fuck. <laughs> Damn it. Also, in the uh, the whole Robin thing with the UK, you can also you also get a uh, 
the Red Hood Robin. Hmm. So, that's all. I think it's actually called the Red Robin, maybe. I'm not for sure. So, yeah. That's about it. So, you guys have any gaming news, maybe? Uh, I have so a bit. So, this won't be short. I have a couple. Okay. Okay, the first is, like, something that was kind of, like, recently done, and that is uh, PS2 downloadable games on PSN. Now, I believe the prices are $10 for these games, and what they're doing is basically they're just porting these PS2 games, which is, you know, I'm not that interested because, you know, this is kind of only for, like, maybe, like, slim owners because they, they don't have the backwards compatibility anymore. And it's like if you have backwards compatibility, it'd be like the same price, ten dollars, to get some of these games. But there's like Grim Grimoire on there, and there's like a few other games. I know they're gonna do like God Hand and stuff like that. So popular games, but I don't know. How do you guys feel about PSN porting all these PlayStation Two titles for ten bucks? It's cool, man. If people can't find great. games, then it's awesome. I hope they put Shadow Hearts on there. I hope they put Devils. Summoner on there. I hope they put a whole bunch of rare shit. Like, uh, yeah. Digital yeah. Devil Saga, Nocturne, both Persona games. They can be fucking awesome. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if they'll be doing rare games. That or... reminds me. It reminds you what? That reminds me. Uh, someone, I, I saw this on uh, Kotaku, I believe. Um, they have, someone has mentioned to them, uh, they have saw a UK, uh, like, game site, like, game store site that listed, um, Jack and Daxter Trilogy HD. Oh, yeah, I think I heard about so that. So, we yeah, might, I that. yeah, I am so fucking excited. Jack and Daxter was my favorite series on the PS2. Let's see. Jack and Daxter. I like Jack and Daxter a lot better. But I hear Jack 3 is where it's at. Yeah. And I recently got a free copy of Jack Dude, 3. Dude, I love Jack 3. <laughs> but yeah, for those PS2, PSN, I got the launch lineup here. They started October 4th. They have God Hand, Grim Grimoire, which is by NIS. Maximo Ghost to Glory, Odin Sphere by Atlas, which is a great game, and Ring of Red. So those those five games are on PSN right now. And they should be adding more. Right on. Yeah. So. Eight. And the other other piece of news is just a little like kind of notice for any Xseed fans, and that is XSeedGames.com has officially launched their store on their website. They've never had a store before, so now you can actually go to xseedgames.com and actually go back and buy some of these like rare games that are kind of hard to find. Like, And they're pretty fairly priced, like Trails in the Sky is $30, which is like average. One or two Chronicles of Ease is $30. You can get like limited editions. You can buy like what came in the limited editions like separately, so you can just like get the CD for 5 bucks or something like that. And they have one I'm really interested in because it's actually one of the rarest Wii games, and I'm pretty excited about it. It's Rune Factory Frontier for 25 bucks. That game's nice. impossible to find, and but they have it on Xseed site, so I might be picking that up soon. So if you're an Xseed fan, they got tons of stuff. They even have like some T-shirts, custom T-shirts. So definitely check out their new store. Sweet. So is that it for gaming news? Anyone else got any news they want to share? Hold on. Does Xseed sell their sh uh, shitty games that they uh, no, brought they, over? No, like I mentioned that before, they're not <laughs> they're not selling the old school XS games from when they used to be XS. No one will want those, and if they did, they'd be selling them for like two bucks or something. <laughs> it's all their newest stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just happy XE turned around from the company they used to be. <laughs> so anyways, it is that time in the podcast where we do our segments. So I'm going to go ahead and start things off. 
And for my segment, I'd like to recommend obscure gems or games that were just kind of like swept under the rug or kind of forgotten about. And today I'll be talking about a more of a retro game, and that is Valus 3, which is on the Sega Genesis and I believe Turbo Graphics and whatnot. Now, Valus is like a side scroll, 2D side scrolling, like action RPG kind of, and it's really well done. You, you have multiple characters and you can switch between them. You get like all kinds of power ups and, there's, like, one character in Valus 3 who has, like, a whip, so it's, like, kind of feels like Castlevania, and it's really well done. You find It's a hard game, too. It's not going to be, like, no walk in the park, but it's it's interesting because some bosses, you kind of want to use specific characters on them, and you got to, like, learn their, like, boss patterns and whatnot. The enemies are pretty... Well, the, the variety in the levels is actually really nice. Changes up a lot, and it's got these really nice, like, old school anime like cutscenes. Like if you remember the old school kinda nineties style anime, it's got that going for it. Like for Ninja Gaiden it kinda reminds me of those yeah. cutscenes on there. It's really cool. They're, those cutscenes are really good. I love the artwork in them. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like you get power ups and whatnot and it's just a really well done game. I don't know how hard it is to find on the Genesis. I think it's kinda pricey. No, 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 no. The first one's not uh, not that bad. It's like ten bucks. Yeah. What about Valus Three? Uh, Valus Three, you can find for like ten, fifteen bucks. It's yeah. not that bad. Well, then in that case, I don't know what you guys are doing. Jump on that. <laughs> I mean, it's a series. <laughs> it's a series not a lot of people talk about. And if you have a Genesis, I think you owe it to yourself to play those games. Because like, even like I've just been addicted to that game. I love it. I always find myself going back to it because it's so much fun and really well executed. So. That is my segment. Any of you guys ever played um, Dash and Desperados? No. Oh, man. Nope. What's that for? Uh, it's for the Genesis. It's like, it's a platformer racer. It's weird. So it's like, it's like split screen, vertic- like or horizontally or whatever, and then you've got your own little like cowboy guy, you run as fast as you can. There's power-ups that kind of show up after the first person in the race passes them. So they could get a cowboy boot, you go faster, you got bombs to throw at each other, and you race to the end to get like a kiss from this girl or whatever. It's it's tons of fun. It's not too expensive either. Sounds fun. It ate up a lot of my childhood. <laughs> Did you ever play Uniracers on the Super Nintendo? That ate up a lot of my childhood. And it's like <laughs> a two D side scrolling racer as well. Yeah, I've seen that. It's I haven't game. even tried it though. It's a great game. I mean the music is epic in that game, and it's just really well done. You get, like, two players playing that. It's so much fun. Just classic. And it was published by Nintendo, so it's an official Nintendo game. So, you know, the quality is pretty good. Yeah. I think it was one of the launch games, wasn't it? I think so. I think it came out really early. Yeah. Because I remember when I had my Super Nintendo, it was one of the first games I had. All I ever got All was right, Super I'm Mario ready. World. <laughs> I got that too with Mario Kart. Cause it was well, like my a... mom, my mom thought Yoshi was cute, so she thought it would be okay if she bought it. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> the Yoshi is cute. <laughs> my mother, my mother got me into Mortal Kombat, <laughs> Grand Theft Auto. Yeah. It's like, here, son, I think you'll like these games. <laughs> well, see, here's the thing. Uh, my mother, um, I only knew about GTA 3. Um, I never pl- played the first or second. Well, I played the second one, but uh, not back then. Um, but whenever PS2 came out or whenever GTA 3 came out... Uh, I had the PS2, and she rented uh, GTA 3, and she played it, and we didn't... Ha- she didn't save it um, since it was a uh, rental. Like, the you know, save the game. And uh, she only let me uh, play the part, like, at the very first where you drive to your... to your, um, like, little hot- hideout... And then I'd have to give her the controller and walk back to my room. <laughs> so yeah, 
<laughs> um, but yeah, um, I'm ready if you guys are. Go. I know you're pissed off. Go for it. <laughs> Don't hold it back. I'm all horny. <laughs> You know what pisses me off? What? Whenever you're playing a, a fighting game, and you're like you're almost down, you're like down to your last, you know, hit that you can, you know, take, and then your opponent is as well, and then like you're about to punch them, and then they do like a super fucking move, which like blocks your attack or whatever, and then hits you, and then. It's like it pisses me off. It like I I throw my controller down I'm like fuck you. <laughs> like I was playing X Men vs Street Fighter and like I was like Wolverine and I was like doing the the X barrage or whatever it's called and then she like uh, it was uh, Rogue and she did her special and like you know kissed me. I was like. What the fuck? And, you know, it's like, KO! Rogue wins. I was, and I threw my controller down, walked out, I was like, bullshit. <laughs> and now you need another new Sega Saturn controller. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> it still works. <laughs> But yeah, that's why I'm pissed off this week. Quick Freeze 4 isn't here this week, but his segment is still alive. It's Play Lives Here, and he's bringing gamers together one game at a time. Yeah, I'm doing the hand thing that Clive always <laughs> does, too. Uh, I'm doing it with both a couple times because I'm kind of, you know, awesome like that. But a uh, great game from my childhood, a retro game on the Genesis. I mean, Genesis are dirt cheap. You know, the games on them are really cheap, too. So it's awesome. I think you all should get this. It's called Dash and Desperados. And uh, it's a Data East game, I believe. Um, it's pretty much uh, better played with two people. Um, it's a platforming game, but it's also like a racing platforming game. Where you pick up all kinds of power-ups. Like, you get, like, a snowman, and you can, uh, like, freeze your opponent. You run to the end of the... Uh, platforming level and get like a kiss from the the hot chick with the nice rack at the end um along with a couple other things that i like to do to my tv and uh i don't know why i'm talking about that but um you know there's really cool boss fights there's there's a ton of different weapons uh different power-ups it's a, it's a lot of fun and it's it's really cheap. It's easy to find. I I think there's like three or four copies at Game Deals right now that I, I see all the time. Like, why are these still here? This is a great game. People need to play it. It's called Dash and Desperados. Look it up. Don't even watch a video. Just order that shit or go to like a retro gaming store and find it and play it. Get a friend. If you don't have any friends, go make a friend. Tell a homeless guy you got some crack in your house, and uh, you can only have it if he plays some Genesis with you, because it's awesome. You won't regret it. You'll be addicted like crack. Uh. <laughs> it's cheaper, too. It's awesome. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> that was great. All right. Um, the shout-out I'm shouting out, or the person I am shouting out is... Meeting Flipper. Um, I don't know if uh, have you guys uh, watched his videos? Yeah, I've been subscribed to him for a while. And Jordan's a cool guy. Yeah. I don't watch very he many. He does, videos you know. Right now, though. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, he does game reviews. Uh, he does like tag videos sometimes. Um, you know, does unboxings. You know. The same same stuff we do. Uh, he's a cool guy. Uh, so, yeah, go subscribe to him, or I'll break your legs off with a uh, elephant trunk. <laughs> it's intense. I want to see that happen. I'm unsubscribing yeah. right now. <laughs> there, I just clicked the unsubscribe button. Bring uh, it. 
Go get your plane ticket to Canada. Go. Let's do this. Oh. Yes, to Canada. You can find me at Canada. <laughs> Just search. That's my address, Canada. <laughs> one, two, three, Canada Street. <laughs> There's only one street. <laughs> yeah. He, he's a cool guy. Yeah, he's cool. cool Definitely gasher. check him out. Okay. okay, so it's that time in the podcast where we answer your, any questions that we received. And this week, we only have one question, but it comes from Video Game Fan 987, a.k.a. A skater. And he asks, hey, guys, I have a question for you. And my question is, if you could have one arcade cabinet of any choice from any era to any genre, what would it be? Thanks for answering my questions and keep up the good work, skater. So who wants to start that off? I already have an arcade cabinet, but it's definitely not the one I want. <laughs> oh, my God. There is definitely one arcade cabinet that I absolutely want, but I it it'd be like one of the hardest things to ever find. It's not like that whole uh, baseball bat game where you it's like a beat 'em up with baseball bats. It's not it's not that. However, that game is so awesome. Um it's actually called Osman. It's a Japanese exclusive arcade game, but what it is is it's actually the spiritual uh like successor to Strider. Mm. Which is, it's just, you, you gotta look it up. When I'm taught, when I start talking Strider, this one guy, he told me about Osman like a year ago, and I, I talk about Osman, nobody knows about Osman, and I looked up some game videos, and it's just freaking awesome. If I could actually get off my ass and learn how to use, like, a MAME emulator, I would totally be downloading Osman as soon as I could find, like, a torrent or something for it, because it, it looks fucking sweet, because Strider rules, and, then like a newer, more updated Strider is awesome too. Nice. I get that. Yes. How do you nice. spell that, Osman? Um, I think it's just O S M A N. You don't know how you don't know how to use uh name? I I barely ever piss around on my computer. I'm only on the on like Facebook. Yeah. Well I could teach you. Well I got I got I got tons of games here. I mean yeah. I don't really feel the need to piss around with an emulator and yeah. keep all these games collecting dust more, so. Yeah, that game looks great. I'm looking at, like, screenshots. Yeah. But I can't remember, there's another game that was, like, supposed to be a sequel to uh, Strider as well. Uh, it's on It's on the Xbox Live Arcade, and it's on uh, PSN as well. Mm. Uh, it's, like, Lunar something... Uh, I'm gonna have to turn on my 360 and look, because I'm pretty sure I have the trial or something like that on there. But it's like multiplayer; you can look like four people at the same time, and it's it's pretty cool. I think I've heard of something like that. Is it an older game, like older Xbox Live? Um, uh, not really. I think it came out earlier this year. What about uh, you, Techno? Any idea for a cab? Oh man. I I would I want so many. Um I'm so jealous of Jumbo Junkie. Yeah. He's got his arcade collection. room. Oh my god. Yeah. And he's a Sega fan. Just like me. Um man, I, I'm just gonna name off, you know, a few. Um you know, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, um Shit. Um, Mortal Kombat 2. I have that. Um, what? You have an MK2 cab? I do. It's sitting at my old man's house collecting dust because I have no room oh. for it. And I need someone to help me recap the monitor. Oh, oh my gosh. And um, Daytona USA 2. It's never been ported to a system, and I don't know why Sega refuses to. Hey, Jeff. It's, like, so damn fast. Jeff, I know the game you're talking about. It's called Moondiver. Yeah, I put that in the chat there. Yeah. I just saw it right now. I wonder if that's any good. I've heard it as actually really good, and I think it supports up to uh, four-player hmm. online or whatever. It's cool. pretty cool. What about you, Dan? No, 
for me, I would actually want really more like retro arcade cabs. And I mentioned one before, like my all time like cab that I want is an official Williams Midway Joust arcade cab because I love Joust. It's one of my favorite arcade games of all time. It's just so much fun. I could just waste so much time playing that over and over and trying to beat my high score. So I'd want either that or maybe even an old school Robotron 2084 arcade cab. I love that game. That game, well, pretty much inspired like eight-way shooter games. So like Total Carnage, Smash TV, it's all inspired by Robotron 2084. And it's balls hard. It's really challenging. <laughs> and I would want that, like, four-player Ninja <laughs> Turtles cab, too. That would be really cool. But, yeah, I just definitely want that Joust arcade cab. That'd be so much fun to have. I don't have any room for cabs, though. <laughs> no, idea. Be- no idea where I put them. <laughs> it, it'd be cool. It'd be cool to have the X-Men, uh, is it two-screen or three? Hmm. I don't know. I think it's three. Not for sure. Three. And it's like six players. <laughs> yeah. You guys ever played I with the Connect yet? Yeah. No. No? I, I nope. don't want to play with the Connect. I'm just really not interested in that. Yeah, there's... They're, Me neither. I don't know. I, I played... Actually, I recently I played Connect Adventures, and I had like a ton of fun with that. I had a group of people over, and it was pretty cool. Yeah, but I, I didn't pay for it, so... Yeah. I mean, I that's, that's where the Connect's fun with, like, party games. is really good for that kind of stuff, like U-Star and Dance Central. Oh, Connect God, Adventure. do not fucking say U-Star. That game is gay. <laughs> it's actually funny. It's hilarious if you watch people actually do their video oh, clips. Oh, my God, I did that. Okay, I, we were on U-Star, and searching for videos, found this guy. He had a whole pile of videos. He was probably... He's he probably north of 50, and he had this old leather Batman costume on, and he was just, like, he was terrible. He had a like, <laughs> monotone voice, and he did, like, all of his scenes like like Batman would. Like, he did the Ferris Bueller's Day Off one. He's like, Riddler, Riddler. <laughs> it was terrible, but it was so fucking funny. I stayed up for, like, an hour watching his videos. <laughs> <laughs> Those are great videos. <laughs> Or like I was in a I was oh in a live stream God. one time, like a Twitch TV live stream, and they were playing Dance Central, and they were kind of like they were kind of drunk, and so it was just they had this one fat guy who was just dancing, and it was like the most hilarious thing I've ever seen. And out of all of them, the fat guy was probably like the best dancer out of them all. <laughs> it was hilarious because they, it was like a live stream where they had the game footage, and then they had like the cameras showing them as they're dancing. It's hilarious. Do you got um? If you do have uh, video game posters in your room or anywhere in your house, what are they? Like, uh, name off a couple. God, I have a bunch. Well, for me, I guess I could go. I have. I'm looking at like two right in front of me. I have a 18 by 24 inch official Nintendo DS promo poster, which says "Touching is good" and like it actually has like felt textures, so you can actually touch the poster. It's really bizarre, but it's the official one from 2004 when the DS just came out. And I actually have something that's kind of hard to find now. And it's another 18 by 24 inch official promo poster for the Nintendo 3DS that says 3D without the glasses. It was one that was in, like, GameStops. Not Not a whole lot of those survived. I got Halo 3 poster. I got those those three Mario posters from Club Nintendo. So there's, like, one with just Mario, one with all the Mario characters, and one with the history of Mario, which is pretty cool. I got an Etrian Odyssey 3 poster. I got the Legend of Heroes Trials in the Sky poster. I got a Sega Genesis poster. Yeah, that's about all I can see. I got way too many. Oh, I got way too many to even list. I think I came home with about 20, 30 of them each, just from packs alone. (laughs) But, um... Oh, like, yeah. I got Dragon's Dogma stuff, Tekken vs. Street Fighter, uh, Borderlands stuff, a whole slew of stuff. Even indie games had, like, their own little, like, cutouts and stuff. Um, actually, something really cool that I did recently get was, um, you know, the, the little top banners that they have on the displays for Gears of War 3 has, like, little characters that are, like, pop-outs and stuff? 
Mm-hmm. Um, my buddy, the day that Gears of War 3 yeah. came out, they forgot to even put it out in the store, so he just took it and brought it to my house. So I've got that. Um, I've got... Well, I've got the Dreamcast kiosk, but that's not a poster. I just wanted to rub that in Derek's face. Um, I've got Xenosaga oh. oh. posters. I got like Street Fighter posters. Um, I guess I guess it's kind of a game. I got a Vocaloid wall scroll, uh, some face in Super Nintendo, and uh, on tons of the Genesis ones. I have no. Sp- base for them, Mario, all that shit. I keep buying them, and I keep getting them for free in games and stuff, so I don't know. What about you, Techno? What do you got? Oh, well, right by my computer, I'm looking at it, uh, I have a uh, Leon S. Kennedy uh, wall scroll. I bought it like, a long time ago. Um, he's in his, uh, Resident Evil 4 outfit, um, because I fucking love RE4. It's my favorite RE4, or RE game. Um, (laughs) yeah, all the, you can hate me all you want. I don't give a shit. It was the first one I ever fucking played, too. Um, because I was, whenever I was a kid, when they came out, I was scared of, you know, John ass spiders and yeah. <laughs> uh, but I played four when it came out and loved every single second of it. And I, I don't know if I've said this on the podcast, but I took it over. I took Resident Evil four over to a friend's house. Well, uh, a guy that I knew, and we weren't really friends that, but, you know, we were in band together, and he wanted me to come over and uh, stay the night, and uh, I brought up over some games, and Resident Evil 4 was one of them, and he was like me, and he didn't like horror stuff, and I was like, no, this game is awesome, you need to play it, and we beat it. Four times in that single night. Nice. nice. There's no shame loving Resident Evil 4, really. All th- when you look at it, Resident Evil 4 is the second most popular game in the series, next to 2. Mm-hmm. Um, also have a Night's Journey to Dreams poster that I got from GameStop. Fuck GameStop, I don't care. Uh, <laughs> I got um, Grand Theft Auto Liberty City Stories poster I got from Bind the Game, or it came with it. Um, It has the blonde-haired girl. Um, It was from the PSP version before they released it on PS2. And then I have GTA 3, Vice City, and San Andreas from the PC version. Trilogy collection posters, and um, they were, you know, they're the same from if you got it from PS2 or Xbox. And uh, another one is um, Left for Dead, a poster which I got before the game was even released. I pl- I was, it was QuakeCon 07, and we got to play. Uh, they had a big old booth of it, and they had a bunch of computers in uh, the uh, where everyone, you know, like all the companies go and you know set up their booths. I forget what you call that room, <laughs> and um, they were hang handing out like posters, and we got to play the beta, and one more. Um, I have Monster, or no, it's, uh, like, Wonder Boy Monster Lair 3 poster that came with the game for the PC Engine. Nice. CD, yeah. Nice. That's all I know right now. And for me, I also... I have more. 
like I, not only do I have posters, but my walls are like littered with. Since I'm an artist, I have tons of video game drawings I've done, so that takes up a lot of room. I have like the Tales of Vesperia sketch, like hanging up at the top. I got the Catherine sketch. I got a big size Legend of Zelda with Link from Twilight Princess. I got tons of other sketches, <laughs> so it takes up a lot of room. Yeah, those are cool. My goal is to have, like, a, when I get my own, like, true dedicated game room, to have, like, one wall dedicated to all my video game artwork and, like, frame everything. I think that'd be really cool, almost like a gaming museum kind of thing. Right on. Um, uh, Night Rider Gamer keeps sending me a whole bunch of questions. So, I mean, I can just, like, list off a whole bunch if you <laughs> wanted to answer which one of these guys. Like, what video game girl has the best ass in gaming? Which one has, like, the best tits? Uh, what do you think has the best pussy in gaming? Uh, no. What video game series gave you oh nightmares as a child? Well, that's probably to Mr. Technoscreek. Of course, you said I'm afraid of spiders and stuff, so you can answer that one. Uh, what's your favorite NPC to abuse? I like that one. Um, what's your most frustrating moment while playing a video game? Yep. Best ass for me goes to... <laughs> Best ass goes to Cammy from Street Fighter, and then best tits go from any of the girls from Dead or Alive. Ooh, any Ooh of the girls like from those Dead jiggle or... physics yeah. are nuts. Yeah. Jiggle physics. Oh, uh, that's the that's that's awesome. Uh, I'd have to say like maybe this like a, the... a supermodel playing on the eye toy or something. <laughs> I, she's in the game, you know. She's hot, right? I don't know. I kind of like the whole. What is your favorite NPC to abuse? You guys ever just like piss around with? Just non-player characters or anything, or no? Yeah, I killed I killed the NPC on accident in Demon Souls <laughs> because I didn't know you could actually like kill him, so I just swung <laughs> my sword at him, and I'm like, ooh, I killed him. My bad. <laughs> yeah, my roommate just got Dark Souls, and he he actually played for a few hours and accidentally killed an NPC and started over again. Oh, I don't want to kill any of them. I was like, oh my god, what a waste. <laughs> I know, because, like, there's some NPCs that are really crucial in the game, and if you kill them, they never come back. So you're kind of screwed, and you have to start over again. Yeah. But you're going to play the game over again anyway, because you have to. Yeah. It's like Ghosts and Goblins, super fucking hard the next time. Yeah. I also like the Super Mario RPG, <laughs> just Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars, just jumping on everyone, because you could, like, actually jump on top of them. That was so funny. Yeah. Damn, that was a good game. Yes. I wish I played it for more than one day. Yeah, you should have. Well, I, I was going to. Um, I just I started playing it, and I really got into it. I played it for most of the day. I got I went from the beginning of the game, and I got all the way to Smithy. And then um, I was going to just finish them off in the morning, and then maybe grind a little bit to like 30 and take on collects or whatever. Yeah. But uh, I woke up in the morning, and my battery was dead on that game, so I was like, yeah, fuck this oh. game, I beat it. I beat it. I beat it. <laughs> I hate when that happens. Yeah, I've had, I got like four of them like that now. It sucks. Yeah, that happened to me recently with Super Mario Road. Like, I had like it 100% complete, and like I turned it on again, and it's just like zero for everything. I'm like, oh, the battery went out. Ah, uh, that sucks. Yeah. And not to mention, I lost like half of my data for all the PS2 games I owned. Because my PS2 expansion memory went out on me. So that sucks. Big time. Actually, I lost a lot of saves Sonic for, like, the PS1. Yeah. Because it was always, like, you needed to refragment or, like, format your memory card all the time. I used, like, a third-party memory card. Every single time I played a different game on it, it's like, oh, I need to reformat your memory card. It's like, God damn it, all of my saves gone every single time I want to play a new game. It's ridiculous. So what I, What about you guys? What NPCs do you like to abuse? I actually just really enjoyed killing oh, tons man. of NPCs on uh, Disgaea 3. Like in the oh. uh, item world, if you talk to them enough, like say you went to like a vendor that would only let you talk to them once in a mystery uh, dimension portal or whatever... And then he'd be like, thank you, have a good day. If you talk to him like five or six more times, he'd just look like dot, 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 and then you just get into a fight with him. And you just smoke his ass in one shot. It's pretty fun. I liked killing them. And anybody else on my team. I, I work alone. <laughs> what about you, Techno? Um, Infamous. Uh, I like annoying um, people in uh, Sonic Adventure. You know, in Station Square, just, like, hitting them and the, them ducking or whatever. Forgot about that. Yeah. 
I can't think of any others. I mean, fucking, uh, what's her face? Ashley and, uh, in RE4. <laughs> Sheva in Resident Evil 5 pissed me off much more than Ashley did in 4. I used to love dropping that yeah. bitch down, down a bridge. Because you couldn't fucking kill her. Like, uh, I always had friendly fire off or whatever, yeah. so I just hold the bridge for her and then let it go when she's in the middle. Fucking bitch. Oh my gosh, I hated Sheva so much. <laughs> oh. So who's your favorite ass in uh, video game techno? Maybe uh, Solid Snake? Oh, man. Well, <laughs> Mega, Mega Man's got a nice booty. Well, Dan, Dan pretty much, I don't know. Dan pretty much said it, though. He he picked a good one. Um, Man, when you really think about it, I don't really know. I can't think of one. You know, I mean, DOA, but... That's for the tits. <laughs> Boop yeah. Yeah, I can't think of one. What about you, Play? I know you probably thought about this question so much. <laughs> the nicest bootay in the game? You did tons of research on this. <laughs> um, uh, I don't know. You know what? I really got addicted to, like, Hyperdimension Neptunia and uh, always trying to look up... Uh, that one chick, I can't remember her name, up her skirt and stuff. Um, ooh, no, 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 no. Uh, shit. Talkie from Soul Calibur. Oh, yeah. She's got rocking tits and a nice ass. Yeah. Oh. And that suit is, like, skin tight. It's like, oh, yeah. yeah. spandex. <laughs> oh, I used to jack off to that game all the time. Uh, um, yeah, I used to jack off to that game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. This is the most perverted podcast ever. What, what about Ivy from Soul Calibur? <laughs> she kind of reminded me of a guy. <laughs> like, a lot. I would have to say uh, Jade from Mortal Kombat. The, the new one, she looked fantastic. Okay, so... Uh, yeah. I got another question for you, uh, Techno. Who's got the sweetest bulge what? in gaming? <laughs> Wait, I don't know. Not necessarily like size, but I mean maybe shape or like direction that it curves. You know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm what dude gay. fills them jeans? You don't look though. No. I'm going with my boy Cecil Harvey from Bomb <laughs> Fantasy Four. He's got a cobra. <laughs> oh, shit. Those are some riveting questions. Oh, yeah. What's your favorite ghost in Pac-Man? <laughs> I don't know. Dude. I like it's Binky. gotta be Blink. Blinky, dude. Yeah. He is the red one, right? Yeah. I have a shirt with him listening to music. Nice. So, guys, that is the end of this episode of... What episode are we on? Episode six. six. It's episode six, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Episode six. So, yeah. Before we go, though, play a play a lives. Tell us your channel and you know shout that out before you go. Uh, it's uh, play a lives. Uh, YouTube dot com slash play a lives. P L A Y A L I V E S. Just, you know, regular YouTube videos and really random ones. There is a naked video, but you need an account to watch it because it's been flagged up the ass. Flag it all you want. There's no real nudity in there. Well, there is nudity, but it's not showing. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'll get another email. It'll say I've been flagged again. And there will be more naked videos. I will make announcements in the nude. I promise this. Play a lives, YouTube. I'm also on Twitter now. Nice. Yeah. What's that? The same thing, playlist? Yeah, it's all playlists. The only thing that's different is my PSN and my uh, Xbox gamer tag, which is play an egg slice. Cool. Sounds good. And where can our listeners find you at, Mr. Techno Squeak? They can find me at, at YouTube. <laughs> 
like always. Mr. Techno Squeak. Um, yeah, like always. Uh, capital M, capital T, capital S. And remember the two E's. And I'm also on Twitter, and it is the same thing. So, what about... How can our listeners find you, Dan? They can definitely find me on YouTube under Nostalgic Dan one And I'm also on Twitter as Nostalgic Dan. Facebook, if you look up Nostalgic Dan, you'll find my page. I update that a lot. And my Twitch.tv, so you can watch me live stream gameplay. It's just Nostalgic Dan. Now that I fixed my audio issue, I've just been live streaming. I've started to get addicted to live streaming again. Because it's so easy to just, like, I'm going to play a game, I might as well live stream it. And to mention that, since it'll probably be like a week before, so I'll be doing a 24-hour gaming live stream on Twitch.tv. I'll be playing games nonstop for 24 hours straight. This is with ExtraLife.org, and they partnered up with Children's Miracle Network Hospitals, and it's to raise money for all these children Miracle Network Hospitals across the globe. So I'm playing and sponsor the Phoenix Children's Hospital. You can definitely donate. I'll be, I'll be doing that, playing games for 24 hours to raise awareness for that, and hopefully it's for a great cause at the same time. So definitely check that out. That'll be October 15th, I believe. Yeah, October 15th. It'll start at 8 a.m. Yeah. It'll start at 8 a.m. and go to 8 a.m. the next day. So definitely check it out. I'll be there for 24 hours. I'll be playing all kinds of games, random games, just probably from all generations, all systems. So definitely check that out. And I believe that's where that. That is on a Saturday. Yep, Saturday yep. in the morning. Yeah. Just come by, hang out. Yep. Don't forget your junk food, man. I oh, did no. that long. I did that long stream. Granted, it wasn't as long as I thought it would be for Final Fantasy IV, but yeah. So they, you definitely need all your junk food. Are you planning on taking regular like breaks at intervals, or are you just gonna like man through this and like piss your pants if you have to? Man through, or like whenever I need to use the bathroom. Like this last Friday, I streamed for four and a half hours straight without like any drinks and nothing because I was so addicted playing Ease and Open Public, Open Felgana. So it was like nothing. I was like, wow, I streamed for like four and a half hours. <laughs> Right on. So it's like, I'm pretty sure I can handle 24 hours. But like you said, like, I was planning on, like, the day before, like, just buying a bunch of, like, Monster Energy and, you know, Starbucks coffee for the morning, that morning. And just all kinds of junk food to keep me wired through the night. (laughs) Yeah, I even made, like, a mini pickup video before my big stream of, like, all the junk food and candy I had ready to go. (laughs) I should do that. That'd be cool. Because I'll probably be buying tons of energy drinks. All kinds of snacks. Definitely check that out. That'll be fun. But I think that's it for this episode. That is episode six of the Press Start Podcast. As always, it's been a blast, and thank you again, Play Liz, for joining us tonight. It was great being here. And if you have any more questions to ask, since we only got one question this week, you can definitely just comment on the YouTube videos, any YouTube video, and just say, hey, I got a question. Or you can email us at pressstartpod at gmail.com, and we can get to that as well. But that is it. Thank you, listeners. This was Episode 6. Bye, everyone. Well, come See on. ya. <laughs> bye. Bye. Love you guys. Bye. I love you. <laughs>